served as principal investigator in several ILIAC stent trials, although I'm not discussing any particular stent on this uh, talk. All right, so my charge today is to talk about complex aortoiliac iliac occlusive disease. So the key word there, of course, is complex, not a simple focal uh, external iliac stenosis without calcification, but things that are considerably more difficult and challenging and perhaps, you know, uh, kind of uh, really push our limits as to what we might uh, do. Let's sort of start with this uh, particular case. Here's a cross-sectional CT uh, image. You can see there's an aortic occlusion. There's calcification of the wall of this aorta, this particular uh, section not chosen for any particular reason. Here's the uh, aortogram, and you know, sort of like we saw in that case today, you know, these are actually nicely approached initially from a brachial or radial axis, at least for diagnostic purposes. And here, this is actually done from a brachial axis. I agree with the comments earlier. It's a little bit hard to get the torque control and pushability you need for a radial axis to cross some of these very, very difficult uh, lesions. You can see on this particular uh, angiogram that here's this uh, flush infrarenal uh, occlusion, very enlarged uh, superior mesenteric artery with a marginal artery, uh, which is visible, dense calcification. That calcification is a warning sign, right? Because those calcifications are the arteries that are predisposed to rupture with excessive force dilatation. So uh, in this particular uh, case, this is an entirely chronic presentation, well-formed uh, collaterals. What we opted to do is to come from a femoral access now. In this case, we're able to uh, gain true uh, lumen uh, passage uh, throughout the uh, occlusion, although this can always be done in a rendezvous fashion, as I will see, and we just saw in that live case. And these are balloon expandable stands, which are positioned uh, right below the renal uh, ostia. Now, one trick I like here, which I couldn't quite find for this talk, but have done a number of times, is if there's a, a uh, sense that there might be some acuity, is I might take a 12 or 14 millimeter balloon above that occlusion and gently inflate it and tug it down a little bit. And the rationale for that is to create a little bit of space where you would think there might be thrombus uh, at or near the uh, renal arteries, and you'll see a case in a moment why that might be uh, relevant. A little bit of space to deploy these and flare the stents above the point of the occlusion. So we start these with uh, balloon expandable. Uh, you can use either. I prefer the precise positioning and the anchoring support that you get with the balloon expandable stents at the top part of this, sort of placing uh, placeholders up top, uh, if you will. And you can see these are eye casts, this time uh, placed up top, two, two, two 10 millimeter eye casts, 20 millimeter uh, diameter. And then we complete this uh, reconstruction uh, out through the uh, uh, iliac segments, staying above the hypogastric arteries with Viabon stent grafts, which are then post dilated throughout with this very, very nice result. And I think part of the trick here is, you know, you might say, why don't we go larger? But again, densely calcified uh, aorta, uh, understanding the luminal limitations and want to avoid uh, rupture, which would be a catastrophic endpoint when treating this calcified uh, vessel. Let's take a look at this one. This was a little more interesting. This patient had uh, acute on chronic presentation, long-standing claudication, sudden uh, aggravation, actually had a wound on his uh, foot and some ischemic uh, rest pain. Uh, here you can see we've actually come from a femoral approach in this case, and we're able to sort of get up through uh, uh, true lumen or re-enter true lumen for this uh, angiogram. And obviously the, the aortic occlusions are at the point of a large outflow vessel, so they're generally inferenal, or they flow through the inferior mesenteric artery, as in this case. And you, send, you can see there's some reconstituted uh, iliac segments at the hypogastric, at the iliac bifurcation. So in this particular case where there might have been an element of acuity, we like to give a course of thrombolytic therapy. And these are two ECHOS uh, uh, catheters. You can use uh, what you wish. Uh, and we uh, park these for overnight uh, infusion. Uh, and you can see uh, in the next day not too much change up top, but a little uh, more clarity, if you will, on the iliac uh, segments and suggesting, uh, at least uh, so I thought, that this is now all chronic. We've uh, cleaned up the uh, thrombus. And we go ahead in this particular case and uh, did similar to what we had done before. Uh, uh, these are actually uh, self-expanding stents throughout, but look at what occurred in this case. So now, even though we flared these at the renal artery <coughs> origins, that was thrombus up top, and as we flowered those stents, uh, this pushed the thrombus into both the left renal artery and, as you can see over here, into the superior mesenteric artery, created a uh, sort of more acute situation. What do we do? We go ahead and do a stent uh, reconstruction in this case. Uh, this was just a bare metal stent placed at the ostium of the urinal and an ostium uh, of that SMA. And here at uh, four-year follow-up, this patient's done quite well. So, you know, clearly when treating these complex lesions, we're able to have these emergent and salvage and bailout techniques. And I would argue that having had the brachial access in this case might have given you a little bit more flexibility in terms of thrombectomy or uh, what else you might have wanted to do for that SMA. But we were able to treat this uh, directly with a stent placement and preserve mesenteric flow. Certainly for some of these complex patterns, you can use CEREB technique, which is a covered endovascular reconstruction. This is basically an aortic cuff and then two uh, 
uh, two uh, balloon expandable uh, stent crafts, Advanta V12s in these cases in Europe, uh, which are placed in this sort of nested configuration, uh, as you can see here. So you kind of uh, create these two ovals, which extend into the iliac arteries, and you can see even in this uh, little picture the position above the hypogastric arteries. Endologics, or a stent graft, is a very nice alternative. The endologics is particularly good since you can pull this down into the bifurcation. And it's a nice option for patients who have combined occlusive uh, and, uh, and uh, stenotic disease, particularly the shaggy atheroma, which is at risk, risk for embolization during manipulation of uh, devices. A circled iliac lesion, which we fixed on the right side here first. There was a little iliac lesion on the left side as well, because on the one side, you need an 18 French sheath for this. So a little more costly, actually quite a bit more costly, a larger sheath on one side. So those are considerations, and you may need to create an endoconduit, in this case with a little uh, stent graft across that external iliac right here to allow introduction of the main body. And you can see here in this particular experience, recently reported, 36-month, uh, almost 80% primary patency. So these are quite durable interventions. Let's switch over to the iliac side of complex aortoiliac interventions. So this is not complex other than the fact, again, we're dealing with very, very dense calcification. This is pretty ubiquitous in our population as we get aging uh, uh, individuals, chronic kidney disease, and a lot of diabetes. In this particular case, uh, this is really a nice indication to use stent grafts in case you have rupture. And these are the cases where you really want to predilate gently and avoid overexpansion of the stent, uh, as we did in this uh, particular case, with a satisfactory result. And I think the main thing here is to not go crazy. There was a little bit of an external iliac uh, lesion just below the hypogastric, gently dilated that alone, and sort of accept here an imperfect result because of dense calcification, understand you can always return on another day for additional interventions needed, as was talked about in this case today. If we look at sort of long-term uh, data comparing endovascular versus surgery, this is from Tim Murphy, who uh, was a pioneer in this uh, uh, through the end of uh, uh, 1990s, early 2000s. You can see here aortofemoral five-year patency in the 80, 90 percent, and the iliac stenting certainly with reintervention now is very, fairly comparable to that, but lower complications. You see some of the complication rates here that you can get with major surgery, abdominal surgery, uh, although uh, obviously the patencies are similar. I think that. Uh, uh, increasingly, whenever possible now, uh, you're going to see endovascular options in pretty much all operators' uh, hands. One interesting thing that uh, Tim Murphy uh, uncovered in this uh, experience in the early 2000s is that stent length, in particular, was a hazard for restenosis. However, how have we overcome that? Obviously, now with the advent of at least uh, three balloon expandable uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, covered stents, uh, with the uh, VAR, the most recently introduced platform, as well as self-expanding covered stents. You can see here that we get better data, and the COBEST data, as you can see over here, clearly showed that for complex lesions when you use stent grafts uh, compared to bare metal stents, you get better patency. So that overcomes some of those limitations with the longer bare metal stents that you might see. Although I would argue, having been PI, some uh, bare metal stents, that third generation bare metal stents are getting quite comparable to uh, covered stents in terms of long uh, term uh, patency. Let's look at how we approach some of these complex iliac lesions so, technically. Here's a flush occlusion of the, of the, uh, uh, co of the uh, common uh, iliac. Generally, you want to approach these in a contralateral approach. It's easier to cross these lesions antegrade than retrograde. You can do it either way. You can sort of see this tapered occlusion on the bottom half of this particular lesion. In this case, uh, we establish subinterval tracks, top and bottom, again, crossing from the top and the bottom. And similar to what we just saw uh, live, this allows us to let me just go back one, allows us now to, within that subinterval tract, engage that wire, whether passing it through a catheter and exteriorizing it or snaring it. Once we exteriorize it, it doesn't matter if it's 0.018 inch or 0.035 inch wire, now we can redirect that ipsilateral wire up into the aorta, as you see here, and complete this in a normal uh, fashion with a uh, expandable stent or stent graft to treat that lesion, again, with the goal to preserve the hypogastric. Let's sort of move on to something slightly more complex. This case involves the common femoral artery, calcified CTO. This is, again, sort of daily practice uh, for us. You sort of look through this case. You can see uh, there is no bifurcation. You can't identify either common or external il iliac. It's all collateralized. As you look at the ipsilateral uh, uh, femoral injection, dense popcorn calcification throughout. And over here, uh, you can see this calcified occlusion at the uh, common femoral. Uh, this case is done as a hybrid. So this is an open surgical patch endarterectomy at the common femoral site, retrograde, in this case using uh, a, uh, a pigtail for a re-entry for a subintimal passage on the left side. Once we get intraluminal now, we reconstruct this. And this is a stent graft on the right and a bare metal stent on the left. 
Uh, and the uh, goal here is to preserve the hypogastric on at least, at least one side while assuring best possible patency with the stent graft on the contralateral side. So uh, that's all my time. Take home points is clearly we do this endovascular uh, when possible. Lytic therapy if it's acute. I like that idea of mobilizing thrombus from the visceral segment, which I didn't show you, but discussed. Stent grafts are, uh, appear to be favorable, or less so uh, with recent third generation bare metal stents for complex disease. Preserve at least one hypo hypogastric. And, you know, be friendly with your surgeons if you're an endovascular guy because uh, that could be quite helpful in challenging cases. Thank you.